Welcome to Capital Cash Flow, teaching you how to safely invest your capital into cash flowing assets. Here is your host, Abraham Anderson. Welcome to Capital Cash Flow, show 23. This is your host, Abraham Anderson. Today, we're going to talk about everything you need to know step by step to finding tenants, screening them, very important, and then placing them in the units. This is extremely important in anything, whether it's mobile home parks or apartments, and I've done both, because I would rather have an empty unit for months until I get a really good resident than get somebody in there that's maybe going to pay a couple times, destroy the place, and run off. Because of the cost of rehabbing mobile homes and apartments is can be several thousand dollars, and plus all the downtime and the eviction fees. So this is really crucial. And we're going to go step by step here of what you want to do, starting with, keep this in mind, the 931 formula. Basically, for every three calls you get, you want to get one showing. For every three showings, you get one application submitted. And typically, someone that person's qualified and they'll rent it. And we're going to go into detail a little bit here how you screen this and see, especially if you're not the one that is showing these. If you have a manager like you should, then we're going to talk about doing that. So step one is take good photos of the unit. Clean it up, take nice photos of every room inside and out. If you want to see the opposite of this, just go to Craigslist, look up rentals in your area. You'll see people post one corner of a room dimly lit, a really bad photo of a dirty bathroom, and that's it. So take good photos. The other thing is watermark them with your phone number. You can do this with Microsoft Paint or several online services. And the reason for that is twofold. You want to show the residents easily, hey, I want this property. There's a number. Let me call them up. So you want it to be very easy to get in touch with and for them to know where to call. The other thing is it stops other people from taking your photos for their own listings. Next step is posting these for rent. And really the step in between that is make sure that you're listing it at market rent. If you post an ad and you get 50 responses in a day, it's a good chance that your rent is too low. One tool you can use to check for apartments, and, and it's not entirely dissimilar from renting mobile homes or doing a rent to own or something of that nature. Check out rentometer.com. You can put in an address or zip code and it shows you the average rents in that area. The other thing to do is just call up other parks or apartments and ask what their rent is. Call up at least three or four in your area and then you can see are you at the top of the market, are you in the middle, are you low, and adjust your rent accordingly. Okay, then once you've found the correct rent, post it on whatever services are most popular in your market. In my market, it is Facebook and Craigslist. You want to post these daily. Have your manager post them every single day. That way you're always at the top of the list when everyone is looking for something to rent. You're up right up there. List them also on any other popular services in your area. Sometimes it might be Zillow or another online service. You just have to find out what people are looking for and then posting on those services. Now, if you're not showing these yourself and you should have a manager, record your manager's calls, incoming calls for vacant units, all of that, because you want to see if you're not getting that 931 formula, what's going wrong? Are they not answering the phone? Are they really bad on the phone, the manager? Or are they setting appointments and then not showing up? So you want to track this. And the other thing you want to do, if you have any residents show up and then don't apply, then call them up later. Keep a list of who they have appointments with and follow up with these residents, prospective ones, to see why they didn't rent it. Was the manager rude? Did they just don't like the property? Do they think it's too expensive? Just check all of these things. This is how you really be efficient and professional with this. The other thing you do is whenever you set appointments, I always I did this myself when I was doing it, now that I have a manager, set all of them at the same time. The reason for this is a couple. 
One is it creates a sense of urgency for the people there. It's not like, oh, let me think about it. Well, maybe we'll apply tomorrow, and they never do. You want them to get an application in right then. And the other reason is a lot of times these people just don't show up. They'll call you up, oh, yeah, I'm really interested. I'll be there. And then you set an appointment just for them, and you show up and wait there, and they never even show up. So set them all at the same time. If some of them get nervous or angry because they think, oh, they're going to run it to somebody else, just let them know, hey, you know, we've got other units available or there's some coming up. So even if this one gets filled first, we've got some other stuff similar if you do, and you can also be approved for that. Now, this is uh, next step. Look at their vehicles when they come up or have your manager do it. If they're really trashy and filled with filth, you know, and falling apart, do you really want them as a tenant? I mean, if their car looks like that, then what are they going to look what are they going to make your property look like? And it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I'm sure my car looks pretty horrible right now <laughs> just cuz I'm driving around a lot, but just kind of look at that, you know, and just use common sense as far as you know how it looks uh, you know being filthy is not a protected class so feel free if they're just you know horrible then you don't have to rent to them another step is have applications there ready and give them to whoever wants one charge an application fee this is important as well because this number one it eliminates the tire kickers and also it gives them some skin in the game and doesn't waste your time I mean, it costs money to process these, plus your time or your manager's time. You don't do them for free. We charge $50 per adult. The checks we run cost anywhere from like $23 up to $30. So you might make $20 for all of that processing. But the main thing is just to give kind of a discouragement for people that are just going to waste your time. Because we do have rental criteria, which we'll get into here in a moment. Now, I will say another note here as far as protecting yourself. If you're having your manager show these, whenever you hire a manager, you want to give them a copy of the Fair Housing Guidelines. You can print these off or get them free from HUD and then have them sign something saying they're going to read it. The reason why is if your manager later on just goes crazy or AWOL and or discriminates or they get accused of discrimination, then you have another document you can show a judge potentially that hey you know we don't discriminate the manager is not supposed to be discriminating they signed this document saying they were going to not discriminate and read this so it just is an extra protection level for you now so now you should have hopefully a stack of applications and application fees the next step is before you would ever run a background check you want to do the free things first because then if they fail, like the income criteria, or they just lost their job, or their previous landlord gives them a bad reference, then you've saved the cost of the report, and you keep the $50, and you just deny them. So step one, I usually call the previous landlord, and we ask them a set of questions. And I'll, I'll say one other thing. When you get an application, time is of the essence, because they are in a time crunch for whatever reason wanting to move their lease is coming up they might be getting kicked out of their parents house they're moving to the area have a job starting you need to process these quickly we typically will tell them 48 hours and we try to do it in 24 that way it gives us a little bit of time just in case it does take longer than 24 hours but time is of the essence here so step one call up their previous landlord ask them First question, you know, first tell them, hey, I'm Abraham with Capital Communities. I had a previous resident of yours apply, and I'm wanting to check, uh, ask you some questions, you know, about the applicant. And usually they'll say, okay, sure. And the first thing I ask them is, how are you related to the applicant? Because you'd be surprised how many of them will just list their friend or their mother or their dad or their cousin as their landlord to try to give you a bad reference. And when you ask them, how are you related? It usually trips them up and they, oh, oh I'm their brother, you know. <laughs> or they'll say, we're not related, they rent from me. And that's what you want to hear. Uh, the next thing I ask is, what is the location they are at? Sometimes I list the wrong location, different location. 
I ask them what was the rent they were paying because another thing tenants will list a much lower rent not lower they'll list a higher rent than they're actually paying because they may not be making as much as they claim and maybe they're trying to move up to your place and they couldn't afford it so you always want to ask these questions to verify and if there's a discrepancy then you can figure it out I always ask them how many pets do they have and then when they say this many ask what kind of pets you want to ask it that way versus did they have any pets because it's easier for them to say no to did they have pets versus no, they don't have pets to the other question. It just makes it harder for them to mislead you. Because you got to think about this. The, pre, the current landlord they've got, if they're a bad tenant, then they might just lie to you to get them off of their back and into your property. <laughs> and if they're a really good tenant and they're trying to move, then they can still lie to you because they, they'll say, oh, this tenant was terrible, uh, just so they won't move. <laughs> so you want to call both their current and their previous landlord but all these questions are just designed to get the truth out of them. I, we, I wish we lived in a perfect world, but we don't. So you kind of have to use your intuition and some uh, specific questions in order to find out what's really going on. Another question we ask is, how often would they pay late? And this question is great. Again, it assumes that sometimes they pay late. So then they tell you how many or this or that. Then ask them who all lived there with them. Maybe on the application they just listed it's them, but in reality they have six other adults living with them in this tiny two-bedroom apartment. So you want to know that up front because if that many people are living there with them now, they're going to be moving into your place as well. Last question, or the, let me back up. One other question we ask is why are they moving? Are they being kicked out potentially? Or just see what they say on that. Sometimes they don't know or, well, they're moving jobs or, well, the rent went up or, or whatever reason but if you if they're getting kicked out of there you want to find out what's the reason the last question we ask is would you rent to them again and that kind of is the summary of everything previously but it gives them a chance to say some final thoughts and you can even last last question ask do you have any final thoughts on them and that kind of seals it the other thing you want to do is check their social media accounts you might not allow any pets at your property. It might have been like that when you bought it and you don't want to change that. And you might get an applicant that says, hey, we've got no pets. And then you look them up on Facebook and they have photos all over there of their seven pit bulls they just adopted. So you just got to check because if they've got them now, as I said, they'll be in your property as well. And then you will also contact their employer to verify their income. What we also do is after they submitted the application, we get back to the office, we immediately call them and say, hey, can you send us proof of income? Whether that's social security or employment or anything else, they can provide you either a bank statement or pay stubs to verify that they are indeed earning three times the income, which is our criteria. The other criteria that we use, the deal killers, are no prior evictions ever and no sex offenders. The first is kind of straightforward. We don't want to rent to somebody that has been evicted. To, for them to be evicted, they had to have gotten into property, broke their lease by typically not paying the rent, so they don't do what they say, and then they let the landlord go to all of the trouble of evicting them, having the sheriff kick them out, taking them to court, all of those steps, all the damage, all the lost money. I don't want that person to rent for me. Yes, sometimes people change, but I don't want to take that risk, and you shouldn't either. The sex offender one is, well, for one thing, most people would not want a sex offender living in their property, especially, I mean, depending on the area. They might not be allowed to if there's schools around there. But the big reason is because your insurance typically will not want you to rent to them either. Check your insurance policy to see, but those are the two deal killers. We also... Uh, limit depending on felonies and if you would like a copy of our exact criteria I'll tell you how to get it at the end of this podcast <laughs> okay so then let's say they pass yay you're ready to rent to them I'll give you a pro tip here instead of a deposit what we do is charge them a move-in fee equal to one month's rent so let's say you're renting your lot, uh, let's say it's a mobile home rental, just to make it easy, and the rent is 700 a month. 
instead of charging like a lot of places, $700 first month's rent plus 700 last month's rent plus the $700 damage deposit, then you're in 2100. What we do is we charge them first month's rent of 700 plus a move-in fee of 700. So then it's 1400 for them to get in. It's beneficial to you because you don't have to put that in escrow. It's not a deposit. It's a move-in fee and you don't have to worry about fighting them after they move out to get it back or all of that, all that tension that it creates. It just eliminates all that. They know up front they're not getting it back. And really it benefits them, if, especially if you don't charge last month's rent. It's a lower cost total for them to get in. So it might be easier for them to move into your property than the other one up the road. So that's what we do. Now you've got the person, they're approved. You meet with them to sign the lease and you bring two copies, one for them, one for you, and have them pay whatever fees you have the rent with. This is the only time we accept cashier checks or money orders. Now never, ever accept a personal check. The reason why is that check could bounce and they've already moved in, you signed the lease with them. Then you have to go through the process of eviction and you've gotten no money and all of that terribleness. So cashier's check, money order. After that, you know, our system is we require them to either pay online or at the store. But however you do it, do not accept a check when they first move in. Certified funds only. And I advise against accepting cash as well, even if you're doing it yourself, because the manager could lose it, they could get robbed, or they could claim they gave it to the manager, the manager says they didn't, and then you're in a bad situation. So don't take cash either. The system we use allows them to pay their rent ongoing with cash at Walmart or Kroger or other locations. It's called Zigo. However, I, as I said, when they first move in, I usually let them pay with cash or check or money order, and uh, that's it. Now, once you meet them also at the property to sign the lease and collect the first month's rent and other fees, you yourself or your manager should walk the property with them and check everything, make sure that you know there's no other items that need to be fixed and everything's in good working order. Then that's pretty much it. You give them a keys, copy of the lease, remind them how the rent's paid ongoing, how to contact the manager, and you're done. <laughs> Congratulations. Now just do that until you got your property filled up and you know get it stabilized, get a good manager, and you know it's pretty on simple routine after that. I should it's simple it can be when you have lists like this but it's not easy however you can make it easier by having systems in place and that's really how you scale. Now if you would like a copy of both our tenant application and then our exact criteria we use to screen them please leave us a review on iTunes and send me a screenshot of that abraham at capitalcashflow.com I will send you both of those documents. The reviews really help out the show. It helps us get on some great guests, and we have some upcoming here. I think you guys are going to like them. Till next time, it was great talking with you all. Make it happen. Thank you for listening to Capital Cash Flow. For more resources and information on investing with us, find us on social media or at capitalcashflow.com.